In this lesson, we're going to cover NIC teaming. NIC teaming is the capability to take separate network adapters in a server and basically group them together into a single logical connection. This provides a number of benefits. Firstly, their speed is combined, which means if I team together two one gigabit network connections, I then end up with a single network connection of two gigabits per second. It also provides fault tolerance because now if one of those links fails that make up the NIC team, well, the NIC team still has an alternate network adapter available to it, so traffic can continue. These NIC teams are typically used, therefore, in circumstances where we need a high availability and resiliency from failure for network connections. For example, a virtual machine network, which would typically be comprised of a NIC team. NIC teaming has been available in prior versions of Windows Server. However, it was actually enabled by the network driver rather than the operating system itself. Windows Server had no native NIC teaming capability. In Windows Server 2012, NIC teaming is now native to the operating system and supports up to 32 different network adapters in a single team. These 32 network adapters can be from different vendors and they can be mixed really however you want. However, it's strongly recommended to never mix different speed network adapters together. The algorithms used by NIC teaming balance the traffic across all of the adapters in the team equally. This means if I had, for example, two one gigabit network adapters and a 10 gigabit network adapter in the same team, they would each get an equal amount of traffic, which is not fully utilizing the 10 gigabit connection. We can manage NIC teaming locally on a server using the GUI. We can manage it remotely using the command line and through PowerShell. So firstly, if I'm local on a server, so I've selected my local server, notice on the NIC teaming, it says disabled. If I click this, it's gonna open up the NIC teaming window. This is also from a command line. If I type in LBFO admin, it's gonna open that same interface. Additionally, if I needed to manage a remote server, if I go to my all servers view, I can right click on a server and notice here I can say configure NIC teaming, which is now going to enable me to do NIC teaming on a remote box. So I have different ways to access this. If I go back to my local server, I'm going to create a NIC team just so you can see the process. So I have five network adapters, two of them, NIC team two and NIC team one, I wish to use in the team. They're both one gigabits per second. I'm going to say tasks, new team. So I'm going to give that team a name. So I'm going to say VM switch team. I then select the adapters I wish to be in that team. There are also additional properties you can configure. Now default values are set for you. For example, the teaming mode. Switch independent means there's no configuration required on the switch. But we can also say static teaming which would leverage configuration you make on the actual switch these adapters are connected to, or LACP, the Link Aggregation Control Protocol, which actually handles communication between the host and the switch automatically, enabling additional connections to be added and removed without manual configuration. I can select how I want traffic balanced, so I have the option of address hash. So this is essentially going to take the types of traffic from the inbound and outbound based on the source and destination IP address and port, create a hash to try and maintain traffic going through the same physical network adapter. So it's going to load balance the traffic between all the adapters in the team. Hyper-V port is leveraged if this is going to be used for a Hyper-V switch, where each virtual machine has its own MAC addresses for each of its network adapters. So this will then actually balance the traffic based on which virtual machines. So all of the traffic for certain virtual machines would always go through the same network adapter. I can elect to set one of these or more adapters to be a standby adapter. So this means it would not be used unless another adapter failed. So I'm going to create that team. I now have the team. And if I now look at my network connections, I have a new VM switch team. And if I look at the properties, we'll actually see that it's using the Microsoft Load Balancing Failover Provider, and it's a type Microsoft Network Adapter Multiplexer Driver. Additionally, if I look at the status of this connection, I'll see a two gigabit per second link. 
Notice it has aggregated together the bandwidth of those individual connections. So I now have a load balanced, failover enabled network connection I can use for those highly available requirements I might have in my environment. I can also do these actions from PowerShell. So for example, firstly, I may actually want to see my various network adapters. Notice PowerShell is doing that in IntelliSense, filling in the commands for me. So I can see my various network adapters. I'll be able to see that load balance team I have. Now notice the name of this, it's not called Nick Teaming, it's Net LBFO Team, Load Balance Failover, LBFO. So I can get the teams I have in my environment. I can delete these. So if I wish to delete it, I'm basically removing. So I can say remove Net LBFO Team and VM Switch Team. So notice it's prompting me, am I sure I wish to perform this action? Now, if you want to automate this and not get that prompt, well, there's actually a way I can say, don't confirm the action. So I'm actually going to say no to this. So we'll run this command again. And this time we're going to say confirm colon dollar false. So what this says is don't ask me for confirmation. And that's just now going to delete that Nick team. So if you wish to remove a low balance failover team, Think least cognitive distance. What do I want to perform? I want to remove a load balance team. Well, I'm going to use the remove dash net LBFO team command. Likewise, I can do exactly the same thing to create that team. As I can see here, the Nick teaming has now gone again because I deleted it from PowerShell. But I can go back in and I can say new net LBFO team. I'm going to give it a name. So I call it VM switch. Team two, just so we can differentiate, so there's no confusion. Then I say which NICs I wish to be in this. So I can say team members. So I'll use that NIC team one and NIC team two. And again, it's going to prompt me for confirmation. I could have removed that with the dash confirm colon dollar false. But I'm going to say yes to this. And that's just going to go and create me that team with those two network cards in it using the default options. And again, there are other commands I could now use to customize that. But I'll now see in PowerShell, if I do a refresh, it's now enabled again, and I have my new VM switch too. So I have multiple options for how I wish to configure this. If you're unsure, remember I can always go into PowerShell, and firstly, I can say git command, where the now is that net LBFO team. That's going to show me the options I have. But also very useful is that command add-on. This is in the PowerShell integrated scripting environment. And here I can just type net LBFO team and it shows me the various commands I can use, adding NICs to a team, adding members to a team, changing them, setting configuration. And it shows me all the different options I can do. And it gives me the nice graphical interface to help me create the commands I need. So I'd certainly recommend you experiment in this environment, try this out. And really this Nick teaming gives you a fantastic capability to create these low balanced, highly available connections and network adapters. This does not mean the Nick teaming capability native to drivers is going away. Some network manufacturers still differentiate themselves based on the features of their Nick teaming solutions they provide in their driver. If that's the case, and there's a feature available in the driver that's not in the Windows native capability of teaming, then certainly carry on to use the driver. The goal in giving the in-box Nick Teaming solution simply enables customers to have a fully Microsoft supported solution.